Today we're talking about how to figure out what you qualify for when shopping for a home. I'm Becca Summers with Seasons Real Estate, and if you're new here, make sure you like and subscribe so you can find out everything about Utah and real estate. Today we're talking about how to figure out what you qualify for in a home. So this is a very loaded question because it's actually pretty complicated when it comes to each borrower. The reason why is it's all dependent on a lot of facts that I don't know without having a conversation. The first one is what is your credit score? Because based off your credit score, you'll get a great fantastic interest rate or you'll get a interest rate that's lower, which makes your house payment a lot higher. The second one is do you have a down payment? Are you a first time home buyer? And how much extra debt you have beyond your housing costs? So what lenders do to simplify it is they have what's called a debt to income ratio. Depending on the loan you're doing, each loan has a slightly different ratio that they allow. If you're doing a first time home buyer loan, which is typically called an FHA loan, they'll actually let you go up to 54% debt to income ratio, which I would never recommend you do because you will be house poor if you max your debt to income ratio. Because if you spend 54% of your income on your housing, and that's just your house payment, your taxes, and your insurance, that's not talking about utilities. That's not talking about the things that go in your house, that's just your house payment. So if you spend 54% of your income on your house payment, that only leaves you 46% of your income for everything else. So that's how debt to income ratio works. Depending on your loan and your credit score, they'll make adjustments. If you have a lower credit score, they might let you do a higher debt to income ratio. If you have a higher credit score, you might want to stick with conventional loan if you have a down payment. Because once you have a down payment and you can do a conventional loan, the max debt to income ratio is not as high, but you're going to get, a, get great rates. How FHA makes adjustments for it is they do typically have a lower interest rate than a conventional loan, but you're going to have mortgage insurance and mortgage insurance is going to count against your debt to income ratio. Other things that count in your debt to income ratio are things like credit card payments, car payments, student loan payments. And if your student loans are in deferment, it's actually a calculation instead of the actual payment amount. So again, it's a little more technical. So I highly recommend taking the time and actually meeting with a lender and asking the question based off of your situation and not based off of everything you're finding online. There's tons of qualification calculators that you can pull up and type in some information and come up with an estimate, but they're not even that great because there's so many factors in those calculators. Because right now interest rates are two and a half percent if you have a credit score above 740. But if you don't know your credit score, you're not gonna know that two and a half is what you're gonna get. If your credit score is 620, you're probably gonna be closer to a four percent interest rate right now or four and a half, which is quite a bit higher than what other people are locking. So most of the calculators are set to kind of a conservative number, but if you have fantastic credit and down payment, your payment could be even less. So let's put this all into practice and come up with a scenario. So let's say you make $65,000 a year and your credit score is 700. That's not gonna get you the best rate of the day, but it's not gonna get you a terrible rate. And then you have a car payment that's 150 a month and a credit card payment that's 50 a month. So your debt is $200 a month. So with that, maxing your debt to income ratio at 43% qualifies you with mortgage insurance for a $400,000 purchase. Now, if we change it up a little bit and you don't have mortgage insurance, you can qualify for up to $450,000 in your purchase price. So that mortgage insurance does make a difference in what you can qualify for, but not that many loans don't have mortgage insurance. The way you avoid mortgage insurance is doing a first time home buyer loan with a credit union that's a portfolio loan or having at least 20% down. Now you can do something that's called buying out of mortgage insurance, but depending on how long you're gonna be in the house, the math and the money might not make sense. Because say it costs you $2,000 to buy out your mortgage insurance, how long is it gonna take you in mortgage insurance to make up that $2,000? So if your mortgage insurance is $100 a month, it's gonna take you quite a few months to make up that $2,000. And if the value of your property goes up enough that you can actually drop mortgage insurance, that might be the better route to go. Now I'm getting super technical in the explanation. So again, I highly recommend talking to a lender who can walk you through all of this 
And I actually would go with a lender that you trust enough to know all of this and go through the, cer the scenarios before you even get there. Because if you have to sit through all of this, unless you're super technical like me and enjoy the extra information, it might be a little overwhelming. So if you are looking to buy in the great state of Utah and you need a lender to help you through this process, I know a ton of lenders and based off of your circumstance can give you a recommendation. So reach out here. We'd love to chat.